Hello, and welcome to this week's Movie Math, where Chad Stahelski and Zachary Levi passed each other on the Hollywood ladder of success, one going up and one going down. Yes, if John Wick Chapter 4 doesn't make Chad Stahelski a top director in Hollywood, dang it, nothing will. He's deserved to be one for quite some time now, but I think this is it, because what a show of force. Did he deliver for Lionsgate, or did he deliver for Lionsgate? Wait until you hear this. So Lionsgate more than doubled his budget for this latest film. John Wick 4 cost as much to make as Shazam 2. That's amazing. That's amazing. And Lionsgate was rewarded for their faith in Chad Stahelski and the franchise, because... Uh, Chad Stahelski was able to more than double his last John Wick debut, really proving what he can do, what he can do with a hundred million dollars. It's not, it's no small thing to hand that over to a director. Flushing that down the toilet, toilet has ruined a number of directors' careers. So it should really help uh, Chad Stahelski that he was able to really to, I mean, imagine what he could do with 200 million, or maybe we should try to have more sane budgets. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons is just 150, and that movie looks amazing. Uh, but this was not only a franchise best for John Wick, like, wow, what a jump, what a jump. But even beyond the franchise, this is one of the best openings ever for an R-rated movie. Almost making the top 10, so close. By the way, whoever cut the trailer for this movie and who ran the advertising campaign should also get huge bonuses because I think that really contributed as well. Uh, John Wick though, in budget and in terms of box office is now in the same breath as blockbuster franchises. So why isn't Chad Stahelski? We'll talk about that in a moment. But as for the franchise, John Wick, before this latest chapter, it was shockingly a niche franchise. Mission Impossible, they can't get to the billion dollar club, but John Wick wasn't even able to get close to half a billion prior to this. And so let's slow our roll. This might not get to half a billion either. This is just the opening weekend. And some of the R other R-rated movies that opened big, bigger than John Wick, uh, Chapter 4, didn't get to half a billion either, despite their boffo openings. I'm not saying John Wick Chapter 4 isn't going to do well. I think it is. But I don't know if, like, I don't know if, I don't know if this is a billion dollar franchise that's been born. But it's really, really impressive. It's incredibly impressive. Uh, John Wick Chapter 4, what's its outlook look like, right? It has to only contend with Dungeons and & Dragons and Super Mario Brothers before we hit a three-week stretch with no major releases until Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 uh, kicks off the summer movie season at the first weekend of May. That's a beautiful three-week three weeks stretch where more than one movie could make a decent chunk of change. Now, as, hopefully it'll be all three. Wouldn't that be nice? I think there's like a lot of money right now in the, in the box office, the domestic box office. Like when you see the top 10, you'll see a couple movies in the 8 million range. It's nice. It's nice. It's a nice change of pace. Uh, but uh, despite Bafo reviews and word of mouth for Dungeons and Dragons, I saw it last week. My review is up. It's amazing. Uh, it's, it's just the first movie in a hopeful franchise, though. So it's only set to open with 23 to 30. Uh, so, but we'll see. We'll see. So that's not a huge content. That's not huge competition for for John Wick. It is taking all its premium screens, though. Uh, and Super Mario Brothers is, of course, expected to be quite big. But that's a PG animated family movie, so it certainly targets a very different audience. Counter programming at its finest, and Dungeons and Dragons is right in the middle, which will either be the sweet spot or a weird wasteland with people either going for the more adult John Wick or in the more family kitty. Uh, Super Mario Brothers. Oh, that's interesting. That'll be interesting to watch. Now, there might be some overlap with, uh, with Super Mario Brothers and John Wick 4, though, because Super Mario Brothers, of course, is expected to be big with Nintendo fans of all ages, and video game fans tend to skew male. And John Wick Chapter 4, whoo, talk about a boys club. This is incredible. This skewed super male, 69% male. That is extremely rare. That is shocking. 56% uh, of uh, the overall audience was also 18 to 34. The diversity demos were nicely spread out. Great casting on the part of the franchise for this entry. And maybe with its amazing reviews, amazing audience scores, right? 
others will be enticed to come and check it out in the weeks ahead and be like, what's everybody talking about? And whatever premium screens are left. I mean, one third of John Wick Chapter 4's opening weekend came from premium screens. I keep saying they need more than one Dolby and IMAX at these, uh, at these uh, multiplexes. It's nuts because New York City's Lincoln Square, for instance, has one Dolby and one IMAX. And throughout the week of the month of March, which has been jam-packed, Every movie has only had those screens for one weekend. It's been fun if you see everything opening weekend. You're like, yeah, I'm just going from premium screen to premium screen. It's a real party. It's like a party bus. Uh, it's, like a, it's like a Dolby or a IMAX. It's a, premium theater, it's a premium theater crawl, like a pub crawl. That's what I would liken it to. And it's great fun. But it would be even more fun if they had more of these screens. Uh, Super Mario Brothers is the last out before Guardians of the Galaxy when it comes to taking over premium screens. So will Super Mario Brothers hold on to those premium screens for the rest of the month? Or will maybe, I can't maybe see Dungeons and Dragons circling back. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe they can divide up the times uh, just like, you know, Top Gun Maverick came back for a few show times uh, over the summer, right? Like let Dungeons and Dragons and Super Mario Brothers get in there on the premium screens. And then for those remaining three weeks, switch it up. Switch it up a little bit so everybody can, you know, get their chance to shine on the premium format. Some of you still don't want to go on premium screens. I really think it makes a huge difference. But, uh, you know, I've, although I've been to theaters uh, in the suburbs and your regular screens are much better, <laughs> to be fair. All right, but back to, back to males 18 to 24 driving this movie. Not only is that fantastic for potential repeat viewing, that audience is very good at going multiple times. Uh, and that, that's what gets you to those big box office numbers. But from what you can see online, you know, males 18 to, uh, 18 to 34, sorry, 18 to 34 have been feeling pretty unappreciated as of late when it comes to Hollywood. Even if a lot of the time, they're just imagining it. I mean, I don't care what Goldstein and Daly said. They misspoke or, or said it wrong because I've seen Dungeons and Dragons and it's not at all emasculating. I mean... It's, it's ridiculous to say that's the case for the movie. Uh, but still, if that's how a large audience feels, that's how they feel. And John Wick Chapter, I mean, John Wick Chapter 4 is, uh, you know, riding that, that wave of discontent all the way to the bank, right? Uh, so I think, because I think this new movie seems like a breath of fresh air to many of that demographic. A movie that has one female character who's barely in the film even. Uh, so I think that's interesting. And also, furthermore, you know, in addition to the demographic information, the biggest turnout... Uh, for, you know, while usually the biggest turnout for movies is on the coasts, for John Wick Chapter 4, it did the best in the West, the Southwest, the South Central, South Central, and the South. And that's the part of the country that tends to be where movies that appeal more to conservative audiences do well. So I see a little bit of that. I see a little bit of that, where guys are like, oh, finally, a movie for us. And you're like, man, why can't you just enjoy all good movies? All right, so anyway. So, and I also think strong male appeal might help the film globally as well. We'll see. We'll see. And again, Chad Stahelski made all this happen. And the, well, they, he gave them something to advertise, right? Everyone agrees the John Wick Chapter 4 script is paper thin. It's so, so thin. But many of you simply don't care because of the stunning action pieces dreamed up by Stahelski. And I'll agree. So they, are, they are amazing, particularly the Paris sequences. As I even said in my uh, spoiler review, they're works of art. Works of art. Uh, and Chad Stahelski, of course, was a former stuntman, Keanu Reeves' stuntman, in fact. Stahelski has some projects lined up. He actually has a lot of projects lined up. Most promising, though, a Highlander reboot with Henry Cavill, also for Lionsgate. And he just signed on to direct Rainbow Six with Michael B. Jordan at Paramount. I got to tell you, with the right casting, also very promising. Lionsgate will, of course, be eager to keep him in house. And this weekend, Stahelski confirmed that this is the final John Wick. They will do prequel, prequel spin-offs, though, a movie, the, the ballerina movie, and a TV series based on the Continental, you know, prior to all this. Uh, there, those things are already in motion, and Keanu Reeves is rumored to be doing guest appearances there, where, where appropriate. Uh, but yeah, John Wick is done. The main John Wick movies are over. So the way Lionsgate can keep Stahelski in house is to maybe put a rush on that Highlander film. But with this opening weekend, these reviews, these audience scores, I think Stahelski could and should parlay this into a primo gig, more in line with what his directing partner on the first John Wick, David Leach, has been locking down ever since. And many of us have wondered why that was. We're like, why is the direct... I mean, David Leach is good, but he's not at the level of Chad Stahelski. So why isn't Chad Stahelski getting these gigs? 
I guess maybe he wanted to remain loyal to the franchise that brung him to the party. But now that that dance with uh, John Wick is over, he can consider other dance partners. As for Keanu Reeves, already set for life financially thanks to The Matrix, uh, what a prince, what a great guy. He gives away so much money to crew and cast and charities. He's a great guy. Uh, he already, though, has a deal to bring back Constantine over at DC. We'll see if that actually happens. And also, he's set to bring his own comic book to life over on Netflix. So that should definitely happen. Uh, as for, uh, so as uh, Chad Stahelski climbs that Hollywood ladder, Zachary Levi finds himself slipping down it fast. Or perhaps he was pushed, although he swears he's not blaming anyone. He, he's saying he was pushed, though. But he is having some sort of meltdown. And the latest case of why hasn't someone taken that celebrity's phone away from them? Uh, Levi's pleas for mercy largely fell on deaf ears this weekend. Well, actually, they were met with laughter as Shazam couldn't be saved from a huge second weekend drop. Uh, I mean, big blockbusters these days tend to drop huge, but Shazam did not open big to begin with, and this is still on the big side for a second weekend drop. It's not good. Uh, but actually, up until this morning, it was predicted to be an even worse drop. Uh, people thought it would have a seven in front of it, so maybe the groveling from Levi helped a little bit. But as embarrassing as the second weekend drop is, it's not that far from Quantumania's, although again, Quantumania opened much bigger. But still, movie, these movies are both turning out to be huge embarrassments for their respective franchises, showing that comic book movies are either becoming extremely front-loaded, with streaming hurting repeat viewing because it comes to streaming so quickly and it's more cost-effective, or maybe superhero fatigue is setting in, uh, or the movies are just bad to mediocre, some of them, right? I like Shazam too, but I know a number of you did not, and a lot of you feel you wouldn't. And again, feelings matter because they translate to box office. So even though Shazam 2 is a good film, if you think you're not going to like it, you don't pay to see it. And, you know, then Zachary Levi cries. Uh, but also, on that note, DC's drama continues to distract from its product. And now that drama has been spreading, you know, Star Wars has also always contended with that, and now Marvel finds itself starting to be in the same situation. Uh, we'll talk about Jonathan Majors on tomorrow's live stream. But with all the dust, Zachary Levi kicked up, and Victoria Alonso tomorrow. Whew, rough, rough week for Disney uh, last week. So but with all the dust that Zachary Levi kicked up over the past week himself, it was, it was drama central last week. He has gone above and beyond, almost to an insane level, to defend Gunn and his buddy Peter Safran. But will they return the favor? Or after all this, will Levi get kicked to the curb anyway? Oh, that would be mighty embarrassing. But I, I don't know. They have not vouched very hard for him. I mean, they came to, both came to the premiere, uh, but they've been pretty quiet. So anyway, uh, as for the rest, but I mean, Zachary Levi has made this a very embarrassing situation that I can see them not wanting to be involved with. As for the rest of the top 10, it seems Scream 6 will squeak past the century mark domestic. That's phenomenal. Marking the first time the franchise has been able to do so since the second film way back in 1997. Wow, oh boy. And Creed 3 is also continuing to do very well, although Jonathan Majors as I said, was arrested yesterday for domestic abuse. Very serious charge. And we'll discuss that developing story. He does say he has a... He, he, I, we'll see how he gets his story out, but he's saying he's going to defend himself and this is not true. But we'll discuss that developing story on uh, tomorrow, Monday's live stream. Many of you actually tweeted when that news broke yesterday that you were in the middle of watching Creed 3. Were you have, did you have your phone in the theater? That's... That, that's, uh, that's cra I mean, it's not great to have your phone in the theater, but that must have, I'm sure that was an, a crazy experience for some of you. Because I, I know some of you are like, I'm watching Creed 3 right now, and this guy's doing an amazing job. What? It was shocking. It was shocking. We'll talk about it tomorrow. And Avatar 2 is wrapping up an incredible run in the top 10. It's almost out where it's been for 15 weeks and counting. It hits digital only, not Disney Plus, this Tuesday and has been at the top or towards the top of the iTunes charts for almost a week now as it's hotly anticipated. It's got over three hours of extras. That's doubling the movie basically for just 20 bucks. What a price point. What a price point. That's price to move and move it will. As for streaming, over on Nielsen for about a month ago, uh, Netflix continues to have a stronghold on the charts with Outer Banks returning for its third season and Netflix's Murdaugh Murders documentary series doing very well because I believe that's the week that the, the verdict was reached. Everybody had great Murdoch programming. I watched like a Dateline or a 2020 or something. It was good, very well covered. I want to say on a side note, 
because of police body cameras and all the different technology that's used today, that what they're able to do now and put you after the fact, of course, appropriately so, into the middle of a developing investigation is incredible. All right, so anyway, The Last of Us, though, not only rose back above 1,000 again this week, but topped the acquired chart. That's big. That's a big deal. It has two more weeks to go on Nielsen's charts. Again, Nielsen runs about a month behind. And then, of course, we'll see how it does about the week or two after that when people show up to binge, when the bingers show up. Poker Face also recovered a bit and rose, uh, rose just a spot on the originals chart. Still, I think going forward, if it's renewed, four to six supersize episodes would be, would be best. You know, like Columbo. Columbo was TV movies, not episodes. And for those of you who don't know, Poker Face is an homage, a very good homage to Columbo. And speaking of movies and Peacock, this was also the week that Megan hit Universal streaming service with an R-rated cut, but it failed to really make a dent. The downside of prioritizing digital release over streaming, you know, going digital first and then waiting quite a, t- quite a bit to finally end up on streaming, is that interest is pretty much gone once it does hit streaming. But they're, they're making so much money. I mean, Universal wouldn't continue to do this if it was not financially uh, to their advantage. As for, as for Netflix's charts for just this past week, uh, Luther and Far Away held on to the top two spots for movies, while with series, Shadow and Bone Season 2 debuted in second place, unable to seat a juicy and saucy uh, Season 4 of You, which had just debuted its own second half of the season the week prior. But Shadow and Bone Season 1 managed to get back into the top 10 as well, so there's still some hope for a Shadow and Bone Season 3. These numbers aren't super exciting, though. I gotta be honest with you. I think it took them way... Uh, way too long to bring this series back. Uh, on iTunes, John Wick Mania is in full swing here too. Wow, the new movie is number one with pre-orders. That's incredible. That is incredible. We rarely see that. Uh, while the first trilogy and the last installment are also in the top 10 as moviegoers either celebrate the franchise or catch up so they can join the party. You better hurry up. It's going to lose its premium screens. Nobody from Stahelski and Leach's 87 North and John Wick creator and writer Derek Kolstad is also back in the top 10 thanks to being on sale. To celebrate, John Wick, Lionsgate spent a, speaking of the advertising campaign, John, uh, Lionsgate had John Wick take over the front page of iTunes. Very, very good campaign. Uh, Also, Guy Ritchie's Operation Fortune uh, just hit digital this week, and considering the competition, is doing pretty darn well. Meanwhile, Puss in Boots 2 from Universal and also on Peacock already, but it's still in the top 10 on digital. Yeah, Universal is raking it in. As for this coming weekend, the busy month of March closes out with Dungeons & Dragons, which again is not tracking great. But maybe it will surprise people. I hope word of mouth and the reviews help it. It's such a good movie. The Sunday sneak peeks have been selling out, and they just added a Wednesday night preview too. Wow, they're showing it to everybody in advance. But uh, we'll see. We'll see if that strategy works. In the past, I think it's actually undermined the box office for movies. But I think they're desperate. It's a great movie. Uh, also, Focus Features has a thousand and one hitting theaters as well. Uh, on iTunes, in addition to Avatar, the, uh, well, digital, digital, wherever digital movies are sold and rented, uh, Avatar The Way of Water, again, I think it's only for sale, though. You know, when these movies first come out, they're only for sale, and eventually they trickle down to being available for rental, then streaming. But Avatar The Way of Water, then also The Sun with Hugh Jackman, and another DC animated movie, they're really churning those out, Batman, The Doom That Came to Gotham. As for streaming movies, Friday is big. Woo! Netflix has Murder Mystery 2, the first one was so fun, and South Korean thriller Kill Bok Soon about a mom who's secretly an assassin. That looks pretty good. Apple TV has The Tetris Movie. I've seen that. I'll review it early this week. And Disney Plus has Prom Pact, which looks like a Disney Channel movie. But hey, there's an audience for that. And then with shows, Prime Video starts The Power on Friday with Tony Collette and John Leguizamo. Johnny Legs! That sounds like a pretty good cast, actually. And Disney Plus kicks off season two if it's uh, reimagined Doogie MD. Uh, uh, so that, that show will be back as well. And that's this week's movie math. What have you been watching? What do you plan to watch? What do you think of John Wick Chapter 4's huge jump in success? And Zachary Levi claiming he was pushed off the ladder of success. But it's definitely... Not good. All right, share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.